Hey folks, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. So today I thought I'd put out a video uh, with a, a bunch of uh, towing tips, um, specifically for fifth wheel uh, trailers, but a lot of them, a lot of them can apply to other types of trailers like travel trailers, etc. So after eight years of towing, I'm happy that uh, so far I haven't had any major accidents or anything. Been lucky that way, and over that time, um, probably. About 60, 70,000 miles of towing. I've picked up a few tips I'd like to pass on. Um, number one is practice. I started out as a complete newbie. I'd never towed a thing in my life when we got the fifth wheel trailer. So the first thing I did was I uh, headed off to the nearest big open parking area and I practiced. Um, you know, the first few times out towing the trailer, I have to admit, I was a little nerve-wracking. But as I got more and more hours under my belt, everything became easier. So, yeah, the number one tip I have is, is when you get a trailer is to practice. Um, you can read all the information you want, but the only way you can truly learn is by doing it over and over. You know, that's how you learn to drive a car, right? You took it out and, and just practiced until it became second nature. Um, so take some cones with you and mark out pretend scenarios like backing into a campsite, um, you know, backing both ways, right and left into campsites, because one way, the driver's side is a lot easier um, to back in because you can see more. Um, backing the other way, they call it a blind back in, and it can be a little tricky. So you want to back all different scenarios, right angle and slightly off angle. And also learn to back the trailer in a straight line going back, because a lot of times you may have to back out of a situation. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, you may, may and it's, sometimes it's tricky to to do a, a actually dead straight backup. Um, so learn how your rig reacts and how long it takes the trailer to turn, and how much extra room it takes. Um, this is also a good time to get a feel for braking. Um, when you're towing a trailer, it makes your stopping distance far greater than just driving your car. So practice the braking will give you a sense of how much distance it's going to take to make a safe stop. Uh, next tip is res respect the weight. One thing you have to appreciate is how much mass you're moving around. With the trailer hooked up, your movements must be slow, steady, and deliberate. If you perform any jerky movements, you're not going to be able to correct the motion the same way as in a car. I kind of see this all the time on the freeway when folks are pulling trailers and they do a jerky lane change and then they spend about 10 seconds trying to get everything straight again as the, the trailer, you know, starts to fishtail. Um, so when braking, remember, even though you have electric brakes or some have um, hydraulic brakes even and disc brakes, they won't stop on a dime. Always give plenty of space in front in case a panic stop takes place ahead of you. Um, I know I've had more than one occasion where I'm on a highway and I come around a corner and all of a sudden, you know, there's a big line of uh, dead stop cars in a construction zone or something. So always be aware, looking far ahead, where that you may need to stop. Um, when you're driving down the interstate, look far ahead and you'll see sometimes all the brake lights coming on ahead of you and you know you're going to have to have to apply the brakes. <clears throat> Uh, next uh, is a hitching and unhitching. Um, this can be a little different depending on the type of hitch you have, but here's a few basic tips. Uh, of course, make sure your tailgate is down. <laughs> Don't back into the tailgate. Um, you'll see a lot of trucks uh, with, with bashed up tailgates, and you know that's happened quite a bit. Um, on the flip side, also make sure your tailgate is up. Um, before you drive away or you'll carve out a nice hole in the back of your trailer as soon as you turn. Um, always attach your emergency brake cable um, in case the unlikely event that you become hit unhitched it'll it'll stop the trailer from rolling around. Um, before raising the front jacks too far <clears throat> I usually just bring them a few inches off the ground and give what's called a tug test uh, just to make sure the hitch jaws are fully engaged. So I'll usually uh, uh, turn on my trailer brakes and then uh, just give it a little pull in the forward just to make give it a little pressure on the hitch so if it's not engaged properly it would pop out and at least if it pops out it's not going to fall on your truck it'll just fall down on the landing legs that are only a few inches up. Um, always chalk your wheels even if the ground seems really flat you never know better safe than sorry uh, you don't want the trailer rolling away from you. 
Um, another really important thing is don't let people distract you while you're doing any hitch operations. You know, people, when you arrive, love to come up and start talking to you. Or as you're par departing, everybody wants to say goodbye. I always say, just wait a second, let us go through this. And because and, you, you kind of get uh, your own little rhythm down. If someone comes and starts talking to you, that's when you forget things. Um, also keep the hitch lubed and clean. I use a round plastic, uh, it's like a Teflon lube plate, so I don't have to put a lot of grease on my, my pin box. Um, and also, every once in a while, check the nut and bolt torque settings on your hitch and your pin box. Make sure they're not coming loose. But uh, as far as hitching and unhitching, I have this, a routine and I do it the same every time. Pretty, pretty, pretty soon it becomes second nature, so I'm less likely to forget something. And then just before departing my wife goes through our checklist and we confirm all the tasks were done next tip is also sort of similar to distracting when you leave but no distractions when you're towing so when I'm towing um, I have complete attention on the truck trailer and road um, you know don't be chatting on the phone of course or playing with the radio or trying to read a map etc you know I let Ann do all the navigation and operation of things like that because um, unlike in a car, your recovery and reaction time is limited to the, the, the weight and size of the rig. So every second will count if there's an emergency maneuver that's required. Uh, I don't even let Ann play a podcast or, or music while we drive, unless we're on a really wide open expressway or a freeway with very little traffic. So she usually uses headphones just so I'm not distracted. And I like to listen to all the noises and sounds if if of the rig because if anything sounds different I'll, I'll know like if I hear a tire that's hissing or an axle bear, bearing squealing early this can mean the difference between slowly pulling over or frantically trying to maintain control so I like to, to have no distractions when I'm when towing. Uh, next tip is mirrors. Mirrors are your best friend when towing. <laughs> Make sure you set up yourself up ones with big enough and far out enough from the vehicle to see all the way down the trailer side to the back. Mine are set so I can see the trailer walls and the tires. This way I can see if a tire is running low or worse is blowing. The next thing is to add a blind spot kind of fisheye type mirror as an add-on. With these you can see vehicles that sneak up beside you. It's good to have no blind spots on your side. Um, and also all, you can see your trailer's roof line that can aid when you're backing up as far as trees and things. Um, always keep your mirrors as clean as you can and check them often to watch what's happening behind you. Uh, next tip is cornering. So this is really for fifth wheel. Um, is going to demand some extra care and attention when you're taking sharp corners. Uh, when you take the corner, the trailer is going to track a path inside that of your tow vehicle. So that, that means you're going to have to take corners a little bit wider. You're going to be j hitting your tires on curbs and things. And uh, how, how much depends a lot on the length and, and of the tow vehicle and the trailer and the whole geometry. So that's where it's important to practice. So you have a better feel of how wide you're going to need to turn so you clear objects. So take the during the, the turn, take it slow and check your mirror to make sure the trailer is clearing the corner. Also keep in mind the back end of the trailer will swing wider than the tow vehicle pass, so allow space for this. They call it tail swing. It's very important in tight campgrounds where I've actually witnessed many small crunches to people's trailer sides as they scrape an obstacle such as a tree or a post, or worse yet, the electrical pedestal or the water tap. I've seen that before where they clip a, clip a water tap and bang, and they have to shut down the whole campground to do a repair. Next tip is plan your route. This can save much time and aggravation. Uh, when you're touring, touring around in a car, it's so easy to turn around, get fuel, deal with any type of roadway. Not so much when you're 40 to 65 feet long and 12 to 14 feet high. So always plan ahead, know where you're going with the trailer before departing. Some of the websites I use to check on weather, routes, and campsites I've, I've listed in a blog post um, and I'll link that in the description of the video. Uh, it's important to know the terrain you're towing though through. Is it hilly, curvy, rough road, etc.? Where an easy in and out fuel stops is. Nothing worse than being in some unknown town with low fuel trying to jam yourself into a tight situation just to refuel. 
If, worst case scenario is is drop the trailer, unhook, and, and just do it in the truck. Don't try to force yourself into a situation. Uh, cities take extra planning, such as knowing when the rush hour might be, what's the bypass route, and if they have tolls. The Internet's a wonderful resource, and if in doubt about the route, you can go to one of your, one of your favorite RV forms and just ask, and, and you'll usually get a boatload of information back from folks that have done the same route or have intimate no local knowledge. Next tip, pay attention to your tires. They're, 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 all the weight of the, the rig is on that little patch of tire. Um, a big problem with fifth wheel and travel trailers may face is tire blowouts. All the weight and stress eventually is on that little patch of rubber meeting the road. I watch my tires like a hawk. Before every tow, I check the pressure, lug nut torque, visually inspect the sidewall and treads. Whenever stop for rest break, Break. I like to feel the tires for overheating along with the bearings. Um, a little handheld infrared temperature gun is a great tool for this. Or recently I got a, a tire monitoring system that in, in, uh, is a wireless and in real time it'll, it'll, it'll be reporting back the PSI and the temperature. So that's, that's been really good. If you can afford it, I highly recommend one of those. Um, tires can look perfect but be rotten on the inside if they're too old. So I think the general rule of thumb is about five years um, on uh, on trailer tires. If they Even if they look good, you should replace them because you can have dry rot inside. Um, the other thing I did when I purchased my, my second set of tires, I elected to upgrade them to a higher load range. So I went from what's they call a load range D to an E, and that, that gave me just a little bit more stiffness in the sidewalls and a little more weight capacity you just have to make sure your your rims are capable of handling the extra uh, the extra load range tires next tip is wind our not so gusty friend wind i find wind to be the biggest enemy to my fifth wheel trailer towing experience being that the rig is nearly 13 feet high and box shaped any sort of wind can have a dramatic effect the worst case scenario is on the big interstate highways when traveling among the tractor trailers. When it's really gusty and they are passing you by, they are pushing a lot of air themselves. And there's kind of a push-pull effect that happens that you must be aware of. Wind can have a, a devastating effect on fuel mileage and is harder than the truck trying to pull the trailer through it. And if you add hills into the equation, it's even worse. So I always check the weather and tend to plan my tow days around the wind. Many times I'll leave a day early or a day late to get the least wind. One time we were towing across South Dakota's rolling hill country into 30 mile an hour winds and I, I had enough and just pulled into a fancy R, RV resort to wait it out. May as well spend the money on a nice place than diesel fuel spent dragging the trailer through a wall of wind. I find traveling anything above 25 to 30 miles an hour of wind is no fun. Next tip, backing it up. This can be the most intimidating part of fifth wheel ownership, the dreaded backing into a campsite with the local peanut gallery watching. <laughs> so I'll give you a few tips of backing up. I also uh, have a blog post and a video about it. I'll link to that in the description. First tip is take your time. Rushing it only, is only going to enhance your chance of problems. Fifth wheels respond to your steering input in kind of a delayed manner. By going slow, you have a better chance to correct a misguided path. It will help if, if you can pull a good distance ahead before backing in to allow plenty of space for a gradual turn into the spot. Second, always use a spotter. Also, have a simple set of hand signals and have a spotter always visible in your mirrors. A set of two-way radios or cell phones for communication is another option, but you want to be careful that uh, you still can see the person because, you know, they could trip and fall, hit their head, and uh, you don't hear them, so you just keep backing up, and pretty soon you run over your partner. <laughs> uh, third is GOAL. GOAL stands for get out and look. I'll sometimes do this twice or more if in doubt. No shame in looking. It's actually an acronym used by professional truckers. Fourth, look at your tires. Always watch the path of the, t the tires are taking, as that is where the trailer will go. If you watch the back of the trailer, it can get you out of line quickly as there is a large swing to the end and doesn't follow the same arc as the tires. 
When backing, don't forget about the front of the truck. It's so easy to get wrapped up in looking back that you crash into something right in front of you. Finally, always look up and have your spotter look up. It's easy to forget how high the rigs are. A low tree limb can ruin your camping trip. And my final tip, take your time. Traveling in an RV is not a race that's meant to be enjoyable. Make sure you don't overdo the mileage. I tend to stick to between 100 to 250 miles as a nice distance in a day. I feel any longer than that, you start to start to speed and or get tired. Instead of taking the fastest interstate highway, try a slower secondary road and you may discover interesting things or that super cool off the beaten path camping spot. Well, there you go. There's some, some towing tips for you. I hope this helps some of you RVers out there that are new to towing. For more, check out my post and video specifically on backing the fifth wheel trailer and another one with advice on traveling the interstate highways. I'll put links in the description. Thanks for watching. Until next time, Ray from loveyourrv.com. Cheers, everyone.